Hey guys, Sean Hammond with PremierGuitar.com. We are in, I think, the only quiet place in this whole <laughs> building uh, when he stopped playing. We're talking to Adrian at Orange Amplification. We're at Winter Nam 2017. And Adrian, you guys have three new products. Well, four, I think. Uh, you have two new amps and a couple new pedals. And we just heard the, the compressor you guys just came out with. What's Kong, Kong pressure. The Kong like presser, like King yeah. Kong. Yeah. So tell us about it. I can't see it from here, but I think there's five knobs. Okay, so you've got uh, attack and release. You've got chime, which is basically like you can add treble to Les Pauls and make them sound more like tellies. And you've got volume and squash, you know. So um, the settings right now, are they kind of like middle settings, or do you want to describe them? Uh, kind of like uh, leaning towards fast for attack and release. Chime's on two uh comps pretty much dimed squash and the volumes on a quart just a third so do you want to try show us a couple of other sounds on it or is that your favorite and you like sticking with uh, that or not really i mean okay it's not really a dead spot on it it just depends how long you like your bloom yeah. you know the bloom's really smooth on this compressor i work so hard getting it smoother than any other compressor i've tried do you know so <laughs> I mean, that's like uh, quite fast-ish sort of release, but not too fast. If I slow that down to the slowest, it's... And it's the attack being faster is more noticeable when you have a longer release, yeah. you know. It gets softer, you know. But you can, it's almost like the attack control changes your plectrum gauge. You know, if it's slower, it's like a thicker plectrum. If it's faster, it's like a, the plec, plec gauge goes thinner, you know. And it kind of plays a bit like that as well. The guitar plays really easy through it but you know but you can add toughness you, you could push an amp with it if you turn the volume up as well but the actual compressor itself will take plus four at the input uh, you can hang it out of a desk and punch snares up with it you know it will take like you know plus four I think I measured 6.5 volts of signal clean with the output flat out and the squash flat out but you, you know whatever you're putting that sort of signal into after it will be distorting of course now, what was the inspiration for this pedal? What were some of the, the key things you were going for? And were there like, was there a specific old piece of gear that you kind of tried to ape the tone of? Or? Yeah, I mean, a specific piece of old gear uh, pretty much is on most recorded guitars from the 60s into the 70s, you know. It was a, a piece of gear called an LA-2A, you know. You know, they used to mic the amp, it'd go through a mic pre, into an LA-2A to tape. That's out. There's a rack, a studio rack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like an optical compressor, you know, uh, a tube optical compressor. I was trying to get the essence of that mm -hmm. in a pedal, like that kind of vibe, that sort of sound. Mm -hmm. So it's quite kind of, you know, really musical and sings, you know, with a really smooth bloom, you know. Where, whichever way you've got your attack and release you know you can you can have them at extreme settings and it will never sound bad now is it all analog i assume yeah, it's all it's all analog it's optical you know so it's actually optical but we found roche compliant uh, opto couplers how much does it go for uh us map that's going to be 155 okay why don't we talk about the amps that we've been hearing it through it's called the rocker series right yeah it's the rocker 32 and the rocker 15. So the Rocker 32, it's, they've both got the, the old Rocker 30 front end, but they've got effects buffered, tube buffered effects loops on top of that now, you know. You've got the 1x10, which is the 15, yeah, a 2x10, which is the 32, the speaker configuration, you know. They're voice of the world, 101 dB 10s. They're really loud. So you said uh, they're both have, they both have 10-inch speakers? Yeah. <clears throat> a single 10 on the 15, because I wanted to keep it small and light and a 210 for the Rocker 32. Now the thing with the Rocker 32, it's got two 15 watt output stages. So, 
you know, you've got two effects returns. So you can run Strymons and, and do all sorts of stuff with a small stage footprint, you know, and not much faffing around, or like, you know, to do with, like, placing cabs and that, you know. You just, like, run that like a stereo rig if you want. Or you can use it like a mono amp. It just, if you, if you don't want to investigate the stereo capabilities, you just go with it like a, modern, like a, a, a mono amp. You know. And if you use it mono, it's still the it's same still wattage? It's a tiny bit. No, it's 32 watts, yeah, because it's two 15-watt output stages. It's, a, it's always a tiny bit stereo, though, because one of the returns has got a cathode follower and one hasn't, yeah? So they hit each output stage slightly differently. And it never gets phasey. It just sounds musical and always a little bit like, you know, there's a, there's a bit of, you know... More body to it? yeah. Yeah, it's like a you know a tiny bit towards being double tracked. Okay. Now are they both EL eighty four power yeah. sections? Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's see, let me get a look at it. So it's a three band EQ. Is that On right? the lead channel, yeah. Uh, I mean the natural channel is just one stage with just a volume. Okay. And that's what we're playing through, you know. Um, what are the price points on those? Uh, those are ten nine nine USA map for the. Uh, 32 and 799 USA map for the 15. Okay. Now, the last thing that you guys brought to the show is um, a new acoustic preamp, right? It's this, I know, shocking for you guys. <laughs> when I heard about it, I was like, oh, Orange is doing acoustic stuff. That's cool. Yeah, but yeah. So, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's, uh, it's actually not my design. It's a Dennis Marshall design, you know, who's uh, a guy in Scotland, you know. He designed it. And, uh, I think it was designed for Martin Taylor. It was, a, it was like a signature, uh, the, you know, the player, Martin Taylor. Uh, and it's a twin channel. Uh, there's, a tube, there's a tube running as a, as a cascode on one channel, on channel A. It's got a tube as a cascode in there, you know. And the other channel is all solid state. Uh, you know, and there's two balanced outputs. You've got your mute, you've got phase for each channel. You've got phantom power. For the, you know, if you plug a mic into uh, channel B is the mic channel you've got a three band uh, EQ on each you've got a top and bottom shelf quite quite wide and voiced for acoustic you've got, is that like uh, a parametric EQ? Or? The, the mid is the mid's parametric on both channels yeah so you've got the, the parametric mid uh, plus minus 18 dB that is uh, actually the treble is when it's all the way down it would be unity so the trebles all boost sort of 15 dB, you know. So if it's halfway, it's skewed for treble, which would suit acoustic where the treble is, you know. And then the bass is plus minus, you know, uh, you know, unity in the middle. Uh, so, uh, and the same with the mid, that's plus minus, you know, and there's a frequency for that. And you've also got heat control, which is something Dennis named, uh, it was, which is, as far as I, it's like, run, you know, it's like a, a, a shelf, above 1k uh, as you turn it up it's not a bell it's a shelf that happens above 1k kind of in a similar way like an EQ shaping a, thing kind of a similar thing to like a a cap put across the cathode of a preamp tube Do you know that kind of vibe uh, but on a control you know that's kind of what's happening in there but it's you know uh, what, is, what would you say is the main aural effect of that the main uh, presence Okay. Kind of presence and upper upper harmonic, you know, noticeability. Uh, yeah, upper upper harmonic, just 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 you know, adjust it to taste. You know. And how much is the? What's the pedal called again? That is called the uh, the Orange uh, Tube Pre, the Orange Acoustic Pre. Orange Acoustic Pre. Yeah. And how much is it going for? Uh, that is uh, eight nine nine. Do you want to tell everyone where they can go online to find out more about this stuff and everything else you guys do? So to find out more about these new Orange products for NAM 2017, go to orangeamps.com. Sweet. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Sean Hammond for PremierGuitar.com.